Hi, I'm Kayla Beck, the summer intern this year at the Ned Smith Center. In addition to working with the education team, I've also been working with John Laskowski to digitize the records for a collection of thousands of butterflies and moths we have here at the center. Keep watching to learn more about the butterflies and moths you can find here and about the COP collection. Welcome to our Ned Talk. Both butterflies and moths go through complete metamorphosis, meaning they start out as an egg, then a larva or caterpillar, a pupa, and then an adult. They spend most of their life as a caterpillar when they do most of their eating and growing. One difference between butterflies and moths is that butterflies form chrysalises and moths form cocoons. As adults, they only stay alive long enough to reproduce. This means that some of the adults only live for a few days or a few months. Some, like the giant silk moths, don't eat at all as adults. Butterflies and moths make up the order Lepidoptera. There are six families of butterflies and over 100 families of moths. This means that the majority of the order are moths, not butterflies. This may come as a surprise to some since we see butterflies much more frequently. However, this is because most moths are nocturnal, while butterflies are active in the daytime. In general, you probably identify butterflies by their brightly colored wings, but this can be misleading because some moths are actually colorful, especially day-flying ones. Another way to distinguish between butterflies and moths is by their resting positions. Butterflies usually have their wings folded up on their backs when they're perched, except for when they're basking. Moths, on the other hand, typically perch with their wings spread out or folded down by their sides, forming a triangle shape. Like most things in nature, there are exceptions to this rule, but most of the time it holds true. Hello, I'm John D. Laskowski, founding trustee of the Ned Smith Center and curator of the Faye Arlene and Lawrence Joseph Kopp collections of butterflies and moths. The COP collections are a tremendous asset to the educational programming at Ned Smith Center. Faye and Larry developed a worldwide extensive collection of butterflies and moths in conjunction with the rearing process that they did to supply cocoons for scientific research to many major universities and experimenters in the United States. Faye saw an article in one of the magazines that Larry wrote an article on mounting butterflies and she became interested in rearing Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera is the scientific group of butterflies and moths. Through her work, Larry realized that she was making a lot of money and he actually transferred from general farming into full-time rearing of Lepidopter specimens here in Pennsylvania that he sold to other collectors worldwide. The worldwide collection that you'll see is a situation that we have the luxury of having here at the Ned Smith Center. Through the gracious donation of a friend of the center, Sandra Shore Krafzig, allowed us to install a permanent exhibit of three rotating columns that are visitor activated to view a portion of the COP collections. We are now in our archival room where the COP collections are housed. This collection is comprised of two types of insect framing. The first type is called a Riker mount. And it is a display. This has a photo and organisms displayed under glass with a backing of sheet white cotton. This collection houses Larry's 
485 Riker mounts. There is a magnificent variety of butterflies and moths in the 485 Riker mounts. This is one featuring some of the largest butterflies in the world. They're called birdwing butterflies from Southeast Asia. Faye's portion of the collection is mainly comprised of over 1,600 specimens embedded in acetate plastic. These are called Ackerman mounts, named after Otto Ackerman from Irwin, Pennsylvania, the inventor. Faye was the major person who used these pieces of plastic to embed the specimens so that Unlike the Riker mounts, where you can only see one side, with these, you can take an individual specimen and turn it over and see the underside of the mounted wings. Larry, an old Dutchman, mounted his specimens traditionally in a straight line format. This frame highlights Faye's artistic capabilities, utilizing Actea saline, the Indian moon moth, surrounded by dried ferns and pansies. If you want to see more butterflies and moths, here are some tips. To attract butterflies, you can plant native flowers, mow your lawn less, or plant their host plants. For example, for monarchs, this would be milkweed. To find more moths, you can look around lights at night, or on the side of your house near a light. Just make sure that you turn off your porch light sometime at night so the moth's attraction to the light doesn't turn fatal. You can also do something called night lighting to attract moths. You can hang up a white sheet and point a light at it. UV lights or black lights work best, and these are used by John Laskowski. But any light that you have at home will work as well. Just set it up and wait to see what gathers. With thousands of species of butterflies and moths, there's always more to learn. Come to the center and check out the craft egg display in our galleries or come see some of our pollinator gardens. Thanks for watching our net talk.